Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Uh, my name is Aishwarya Anil Kumar, and I work as a doctoral fellow at Center for Wildlife Studies. Center for Wildlife Studies is a 39 year old nonprofit organization specializing in wildlife research, conservation, policy, and education. Until 2020, we used to host public talks on a uh, latest topic in wildlife science and conservation in our Bangalore office. And due to pandemic, instead of conducting uh, uh, offline events, we started online webinar series. Uh, so far, our webinars have covered a wide range of topics. Uh, you can visit our YouTube channel uh, if you want to view our previous webinars. And today's webinar will also be recorded and available on our YouTube channel. Thank you all of you for joining us this evening. We have a wonderful panelist uh, joining us, uh, talking about their uh, journey and uh, joys of nature journey. So we have uh, Patricia Sampoy uh, and Sangeeta Kadur in our panel today. Um, to briefly introduce you to them, Patricia Sampoye is a biologist from Brazil, working at the University of Florida. She has previously served as assistant director and research assistant for the biological dynamics of forest fragments, Brazil. Her background is in the field of tropical forest ecology. Patricia has also been a volunteer and treasurer for Association for Tropical Biology and Conservation, ATBC, for the last 10 years. She does not have a formal background in art, but always has a passion for watercolor, nature journaling, ceramics, and other media. She thinks art is a powerful tool for self-expression, communication, and paths to find peace and joy. She also believes that anyone can make art and creativity takes courage. Uh, welcome, Patricia. Thank you so much for joining us today. Very happy to have you on our panel. Hi, everyone. Thank you for the invitation. It's a big, big pleasure to be here sharing some thoughts with you all. Um, thank you. So we also have uh, Sangeeta Kadush uh, to briefly introduce Sangeeta to you all. Sangeeta is a highly acclaimed wildlife and nature artist with a career spanning nearly two decades. Her art emphasizes the significance of biodiversity and fosters pride in our natural heritage. She has collaborated with wildlife organizations on education, outreach projects, and illustrated for books, including the internationally acclaimed Hummingbirds of the World. Sangeeta's passion for environment led her co-found uh, Green Scraps, a nature journaling workshop inspiring new generation of artists. And through her art and initiative, she strives to create wonder, admiration, and respect for natural world. Thank you, Sangeeta, for being part of this. Very, very happy to have you on the panel. Thank you, Aishwarya. And nice to meet you and be here on this panel. And nice to meet you, Patricia, too. Uh, so uh, to briefly give you a rough stru uh, structure of today's webinar, so we'll have small talks by each of these panelists, followed by an interactive discussion and a question and, a question and answer session. So first we'll have uh, Patricia Sampoye talking us about uh, natural journaling. Over to you, Patricia. Very excited and looking forward to your talk. Thank you. Okay, everyone. So again, just let me quickly thank CWS for the invitation. It's, you know, been such a journey and I'm really excited to share with you all a little bit of, of what nature journaling means to me and my experience in um, doing so. So um, I named it nature journaling a different way to look at the world. Um, mainly because we are so used to look um, at nature, especially being scientists, which I'm assuming most of you are, maybe not, but um, in such a straightforward way, thinking about hypotheses and, you know, um, being a biologist, that's how I've always looked at nature, enjoyed it, of course. But when I found nature journaling, it was a, a big wow moment for me because I realized I didn't have to interact with the world and with nature um, in such a rational way. And this is what I'm gonna try to 
to share with you. Okay. So, um, drawing has been, oops, sorry, because I have this big screen on. So drawing, um, as we all know, has been central to the practice and communication of science for centuries, right? Um, from cave drawings, um, which are fascinating. I think humans have always had a need to express ourselves through um, not only words, but, you know, images. And, and the power of Im images, it's something that we can't um, deny. So here's just a few examples of, um, you know, this happening from prehistoric art through 17th century uh, depiction of the first insect life drawings, which was fascinating for me to find um, this one over here. And um, and it was by an artist, not so much as a, a naturalist, right? Um, and then the first sketchbooks that existed were actually from the naturalists and world explorers that would document every adventure they've had and, and encounters and everything through, you know, writing and drawing what they were seeing. And um, to the most interesting aspect that we're not even going to go there, but um, AI generated um, landscapes and, and art which for me is just mind blowing, but I, I thought it was interesting too. So if you see this image here of a forest, this was AI generated, like a tropical forest, which is bizarre. Anyway, let's keep moving. Oops, it's not. It's okay, what is nature journal? So um, you can see well, right? The, the things, just cause I have so many panels open here from the Zoom that I'm not sure. Formally, nature journaling is a practice of drawing or writing in response to nature, right? So it's the, the act of going out and looking at nature and just record what are you seeing and um, on a notebook, basically. So it's where you collect and organize your observations, questions, connections, or explanations you might have using either words, pictures, and numbers or numbers. And it can include detailed written descriptions or, as well as illustrations and can cover any aspect of the natural world. So this is the formal um, description of a nature journal, right? And I, I put an example of what um, on the right here of something I did in my backyard. Um, we have like this, um, woodpeckers that would always come to this dead tree that we 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 don't want to to take it down because it's such a microcosmos of of life and so i was just you know curious and 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 showing like a, a big um picture of the backyard and then the tree itself with the little um um, woodpecker and then a little close up on the woodpecker and some observations like where it was. I actually put some some words in Portuguese and you know some observations about maybe they're insectivorous. So every year there's more and more holes in the tree. Um, so just to give an example of this will be like more of a classic approach to nature journaling when you put all this information on the page, but it can also be anything you want to register on a notebook, on a piece of paper, or even, you know, we don't need to have a, a notebook. It can be a piece of paper, or even your camera. But I think the whole point of, um, and we are going to get to it, is to understand the power of drawing. So, and there are no rules for format, format, composition, or content. It's really up to you, to anyone interested. You can use just images, just text. You can glue pictures. You can use lots of colors. You can just use pencil. And here is an example of, you know, sometimes I'm just not in the mood of making all those observations like in the, in the previous uh, image. So I just want to relax. So. I just draw some things and paint with watercolor. And some other days I'm just like, okay, I went for a walk and then I do a collection of what 
things that I've collected and see, and then just name them if I know, you know, having a, a background in biology kind of helps. But it, it, the point is that it doesn't have to be in any specific um, shape or form, or at least that's the approach I have. Um, and so why nature journey? So humans are, and research shows this, um, that humans are visual beings, right? Um, we understand a lot of information out there just by visually looking at it. So it's a simple and effective tool for sharpening your observation skills, right? If really, you, in order for you to depict something, you really need to look. And we are going to get more into it in a little bit. And um, also research shows that we do retain and remember information better when we are taking notes by hand, more so than typing. And I've been trying to convince my adolescent kids of that. And it's been hard because they, you know, in their, um, this new generation, it's not really interested in writing anything down, <laughs> but um it is indeed a powerful tool and a simple one, if we think. And drawing can enhance visual thinking skills, creativity, and problem solving. And recording our observations, and this for me, it's what, um, it's the most important one, personally. Enhances the ability to be present in the moment, which contributes to our well-being. Just the fact that we uh, right there, turning off our thinking brain, looking at something, trying to draw that and paint and using colors and creatively approaching that just brings us to the present moment, which is a source of well-being and gets us outside and away from technology. I think I put this more for this new generation than from ourselves as uh, biologists. I think, you know, most of us probably get out a lot, but um and it's fun, right? I love this quote um, from Picasso that says, art washes away from the soul the dust of everyday life. And that's how I, I feel daily. Every time I pick up a pencil or a brush and I just, you know, draw a leaf, it just brings so much peace and joy and just washes away every concern. Um, and images are also important tools for um, storytelling and communicating science. And I'm sure our other panelist is going to talk more about this, but I just wanted to sh share this story because it's so much fun. We were on a walk near our house. We live um, in Florida and there's like, um, compared to India, to Brazil, to tropical forest, a very boring environment <laughs> with certain species dominating like pine and oaks, but it's beautiful in itself. But you know, I'm from Brazil, so I understand this. Anyway, so we saw some poop and on a walk, and it was super interesting because if you can see, um, there's like a little claw here. And I was like, okay, this has to be from a crustacean, right? So then I, I drew that. Um, and then in another day, completely unrelated to it, we saw this, uh, gosh, I forgot the name of it. But anyway, this... Um, arthropod and and he wasn't carrying this uh, my son put this here so, so he had an umbrella so um and then i decided to draw that too and then i was like well it does look like the collar it's very similar to the one i saw in the poop so and we had no idea what this poop was from what animal right so then talking to a friend at the university uh, matt Heller, excuse me um, he lives in our neighborhood. He's a wildlife ecologist um, and professor. And he put a bunch of camera trappings around our neighborhood. And then I was telling him about this and he was like, oh, for sure, this is an otter poop. And otters love to eat this kind of, of arthropod, um, aquatic, like semi-aquatic, right? And then he showed me pictures of that he got like in a in a lake nearby, which I had no idea um, that we had otters here, right? 
So then looking at this from a perspective of a biologist, like, yeah, okay, come on, you know, we all know that, we know those interactions. But in terms of a powerful storytelling for kids, like my kids were fascinated about it, you know, when we when we made all those connections. I think that there is power in there too, not only what brings us in terms of well-being and happiness, but the potential to um use this as a tool for communicating science. But um, I think most people, or at least when, you know, I've been doing little bits of workshops on nature journaling at the Association for Tropical Biology and Conservation Annual Meetings. And I think that that's how I, um, that was the connection, connection for me to be here um, sharing this with you today. But through these workshops, I think that the, the, the biggest resistance that people or that I see people having saying, well, but there's no way I can draw. How am I supposed to go out and draw a tree, right? And the truth of the matter is that there's um, anyone can draw. Yes, it's true. There are people that are born with a, you know, uh, like a, a natural talent for it. And they are probably going to get to a point much faster than me, for example. But drawing is a learnable skill. And research shows this. I was actually looking yesterday and there's a lot of research actually done showing um, how drawing is uh, learnable. So this is just a cartoon showing, you know, I, I loved it, of the perspective of like the expectation that we would you know, be born learning how to draw when she says surgeons already know how to cut into people. Engineers know how to build bridges right out of the gate, right? And it is true. And and the other thing that will contribute for you to be able to draw, it's what John Muir Laws, um, this person that has this quote, he is like the father, grandfather of nature journaling in the U.S., right? Um he, they are now trying to expand it um, to the world, but in the U.S., he's like the person um, that started this whole process, this whole movement here. So he says that um, no tool is a shortcut about drawing, right? It is not the pen, it's not the paint set, it's not the journal. It's the what he calls pencil miles, which I thought it was such a brilliant concept which means it's the time in the field that you spend observing, wondering, and drawing. So the more you do, the easier it gets. And also the third aspect, which for me was like a big discovery is how to learn, I mean, to learn how to actually see. So we are so used to have those images from childhood imprinted in, in um, in our minds, right? In terms of like, let's draw a person and then it's a stick figure. But um, there is this book, which is fantastic calling, called Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain, which says that if we are able to turn off our rational brain and, and just really look at something and just follow the lines of that, we will be able to, to get better and, and draw better, whatever that means. And so I just wanted to show you, this is a statue on the Smithsonian. And, you know, if I had to draw the person, how my brain, how I always learned to draw persons as a stick figure, right? But then using blind contour, which is a technique that basically you only look at the object, you do not look at your, at your hand or at the paper and you draw what you see, you have to just observe the lines. It's incredible because look, it looks much better than my stick figure for sure. But it's it's hard because it's having to let go of what we know best, which is to think as we look at something, right? And just quickly, there's um, this author um, and nature journalist called Kate Ruder. And um, she, it's really cool because she has like this um, seven ways of seeing, showing how you can depict an image by using all these um, techniques, which are 
techniques of looking, right? The symbolic, the gesture. And then she uses the blind contour, which is number three here, that it's the same one I used here. And when I first learned about blind contour, I was like, oh my gosh, what's the point of this? I mean, I can't look at my hand. What am I going to know what is in? And nowadays, it's one of the things I mostly love doing because it really is freeing. You just look at it and you get the most bizarre images. And some of them are so organic and so true to what you're seeing, much more than if I had put my effort in like looking at angles and going and measuring and, and doing a scale. But again, this is like a very personal choice. And then just to give you an example of myself, um, this is a mushroom in 2020 that I drew the same kind of mushroom, right? And then three years practicing really looking, I think then, and practicing using those pencil miles that John Wheelaw said, um, I can now say to myself, most of all, that I can draw, but with the caveat that don't ask me how to, to drop people because that it's the biggest challenge, at least for me. Um, so you can see that it's possible with practice, with learning to really look, um, there is a way where you can start to see the image in a more 3D, when you start to understand shadows, when you try to understand um, volume and all that. And these are things that can be learned. Trust me, look at my mushroom in 2020, right? And um, there are no recipes of how to put a page together. This here is so just some examples and ideas that are throughout there. So on the right here, there's a, a banana tree in front of my house. So I decided to just um, do it painting it with like um, watercolor and um, uh, fine liner, how it looks through, because it's so obvious during the seasons being a tropical plant and, you know, not being very happy during winter here, how it um, changes through the season. It was fun just to observe this. And so you can do date and weather, overall landscape, description of the day, the place where you are, the feeling, how many, how large, different scales. You can do a same object over time, just like I did here with the banana tree. You can do a collection of objects you find in a walk and other, you know, there are many, many possibilities. And I think that the most important thing for me and that I, I try to bring to the to the workshops that I've done in the past is that the nature journal and and it's it's a simple but powerful message it's yours and yours only you don't have to share it right there's no pressure you can experiment and play and the more you do it like I said the easier it will become this does not need to be an art piece nor look perfect whatever perfect is and your observation may not be new to science if you're doing more of a formal nature journal, but it is new to you and that has value. And the most important, use it to practice being present, observe, breathe, and feel joy and peace as you connect to nature. And every time I start to get caught up on something like, oh, this drawing is not working. And you know, this tree doesn't look anything like the tree I just saw. I stop myself and I say, well, the point of being here is to get out, have peace, especially this crazy days we've been living and have fun. And just to finish it, to wrap up, um, there is a, a, a new, not a new concept, but um, I always, you know, because my approach to it has been less and less formal of a nature journaling in, 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 in the sense of um, describing things that I'm seeing with words and measurements and things, then I, um, I found this um, author called Ali Foxen. And she just developed this, this concept called green sketching. And it's basically a hybrid of field sketching, nature journaling, mindful drawing and etc and it is like nature journaling but with a few key difference there is no need to keep a dedicated journal you can write anywhere you can take a piece of paper with you 
You don't have to learn about nature to enjoy it. And you can doodle in your own way. Not that you can do in your own way, but I think the point she's trying to, to make here is that um, you can enjoy the benefits of this without having a scientific background or having as your goal a scientific observation of the world around you. And for us as a biologists, that, you know, it comes naturally, but as a tool for environmental education for other, you know, people out there, it might be just what they need to learn or they need to to do in order to find this well-being. And I, I strongly, um, she has a quick TED talk on um, about green sketching that it's really good. So if you have a chance, just Google TED talk, Dr. Fox, and, and it, it, it's really, really powerful message. She does a much better job than me to explain the drawing, the, the right side of the brain and all that. And um, I have some resources here that um, I'll be happy to share. I know you can't click on any of these, um, but um, I, if you want, go check this Nature Journal, um, actually the Wild Wonder Foundation. This is a foundation that just has a ton of resources about nature journaling, including a free download of this quick star guide, Jane, uh, nature journaling, you can just print and fold. And they do every year an uh, uh, international conference, virtual conference called Wild Wonder. And this was the 2023, which is always super fun as well. Here's my email. Please, you know, feel free to ask or email me questions, comments, anything. I'm happy to, to support your nature journal um, journey, whatever it may be. So happy to take questions at the end. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Patricia. That was very insightful and encouraging session. Uh, you've really inspired us to all uh, uh, to green sketching now. Um, <laughs> Good. I ho hopefully I didn't take, I did take a lot of time. I'm sorry. So. <laughs> no, that's all right. Um, next we have uh, Sangeeta Karur. Uh, Sangeeta, would you... Uh, yeah. Uh, share, your screen. yeah. share my screen now. Uh, thank you, Patricia. That was really amazing. Nice to see your journey uh, with journaling. And uh, uh, for us in India, I think Brazil is a great place to be an exotic location for all of us. And uh, you seem to be in a great place and a great backyard you have that you have otters. And that was really nice to see. And uh, thank you for into taking us to, through the introduction to nature journaling so beautifully. And that was really nice. Thank you. Um, uh, yeah, and yes, thank you, CWS, for having me here. And uh, happy to be here and share my journey with nature journaling. Um, now, Patricia has given us uh, the basic foundation and introduction to nature journaling itself. And I will take you through some of my stories through journaling, uh, through some of my nature sketching, my sketch pages uh, that I'll show uh, going forward. Um, so I think somewhere in the beginning of nature journaling uh, of my journey or somewhere in the beginning few years, I came across this quote, this quote by Paul Valeri, he's, he's a cartographer. And ever since, I think this has become a very favorite quote of mine. And I easily uh, associate this to nature journaling. It says, it makes a considerable difference if one views something with a sketching pen in hand than without a sketching pen in your hand. That is, I think, true to every word. Um, with nature journaling, every line that you draw on paper, like just transforming the three-dimensional landscape or um, any species that you see with simple lines onto your sketchbook is far more than just merely observing species or the landscape that you're looking at. Um, I think um, uh, definitely one of my favorite quotes and then each one of you should try journaling, try putting your pen on paper to experience what this feels like. It might be a little difficult at first, yes, but then try and open yourself to the possibilities and to the learning that you gain from it. 
than just you know uh, expecting to be a fabulous or a beautiful sketch at the very beginning of it as patricia said and as Je uh, john muir laws has been talking about pencil miles that is true in every way uh, the more you practice definitely the much better your sketch and your journals will become uh, this is how nature journaling started for me years ago. I think this was uh, these journal pages probably are uh, 2005, 2006 or seven, uh, wherein I used to, I started, I think I started out more of a nature person in the beginning, then the art came to me. Uh, I grew up as a, as a nature person with a whole family full of naturalists. Uh, so, um, but uh, I think it was, uh, my art college and my um, uh, journey with bird watching that started almost parallelly together. And I started making a lot of uh, uh, bird lists of uh, species that I, I used to see whenever I went out uh, bird watching. And um, encouraged by the bird watchers, the senior bird watchers that I was with in the Bangalore bird watching circle, uh, to sketch things that I observe and see, you know, started doodling these things in my sketch sketchbooks. But at that point, I was super shy to show this to anybody. And it used to become just my own personal little books and doodles in the side in the corner, just to, you know, capture what I saw, just to, you know, what I observed, you know, get, get it in the book. And um, it was just my own way of learning. And uh, over the years, I think, um, uh, as I put in more pencil miles, uh, you know, uh, my my pages also transformed into something um, much more um, special to me. Uh, these were, I also used to like to write a lot. So there are sketchbooks in the past wherein it's more of writing and less of sketching because I, I was scared to sketch, uh, but still you nudge yourself, push yourself to make these doodles. And then that built over time and that, that built into something. Uh, now I think I have, I, I sketch more and I write less, which is probably uh, not good, but um, it depends on time that you have in the field and all that. Um, so I think my, um, uh, most of my journals have, um, you know, um, observations from the field, um, uh, things that I see, things that they're doing, things, um, uh, definitely the place, date, time, uh, are part of all my journals because, um, mine is more like a traveling journal. Um, I do have journals in my backyard as well, but, uh, not as much, sadly, but, um, uh, wherever I travel, whenever I travel, um, my journals, my whole journal kit is something that travels with me. And over the years, I think just as my journal pages has transformed into something more richer, uh, something more meaningful, something more um, uh, special to me, I think even I've grown as a person, uh, just paying attention to the little details has uh, come a long way to how it was, to how uh, things can become with good practice is actually magical. And um, the best part about being in the field and journaling, looking at things in right in front of you, having direct encounters with, it could be a lizard or a grasshopper or a frog, you know, uh, I think that remains with you much more uh, strongly, much more, um, yeah, it has a special place, I guess. And each of the sketch pages, pages that you see, uh, as soon as I look at them, it just literally transports me back to the time that I was right there in front of that tree or in front of that frog or a flower, sketching it. The whole moment becomes um, reawakened again. Um, to know who I was with, who I was sketching with, who I was traveling with, to what other observations that I had while I was sketching something. You know, these are all the things that make nature journaling so much more special. And uh, definitely, as uh, Patricia said, many things that Patricia said, I probably will be uh, sharing again, like just being present in these moments in time. That is what nature journaling does to you. Uh, the amount of interest or the attention that you start paying uh, to uh, to uh, capture these species onto your book is the amount of interest and the time and the focus and the energy that you are uh, putting in there. So that is what gets translated onto your paper. It is also something, it's about the way you look at things. 
uh, the more you see and how you see it is what gets translated onto your paper as well. I have many of these uh, uh, favorite quotes of mine that are uh, part of this um, uh, presentation today. And this is another favorite of mine. It says, I have learned that I have not drawn, sorry, I have learned that what I have not drawn, I have never really seen. And that when I start drawing an ordinary thing, I realize how extraordinary it is, a sheer miracle. Um, again, I'm sure all of you agree how beautiful this quote is and how uh, you seek the extraordinariness of things. You know, even it could be a simple palash flower lying around in your backyard uh, or on your travels, but uh, just uh, looking at the palash flower in different angles, not just in one particular uh, you know, angle, but uh, appreciating its beauty or admiring it and capturing it in different angles is um, a challenge itself and something that um, the more you take time to capture it or to observe it in the field is how much interested you are and how much uh, you gather the learning that you gather, uh, observing it in different perspective is actually beautiful. And that's how you keep improving, not just, you know, uh, capturing it in one angle, but then trying your best to push yourself to um, go one step forward and do it um, in many different ways. And that's uh, that's something all of us can take it as a practice and start doing it. Uh, this is a favorite book, uh, a favorite tree of mine, the fig, uh, the, the fig tree, the ficus trismosa. It's popularly known as the queen of trees because it gives, sustains that many life forms in a forest or any landscape that it is in. And uh, the best thing that happens when you're journaling is that sometimes uh, so many unknown encounters you would have uh suddenly while sketching this the beater scooped in and there was another time that i was sketching a fig tree again and there was a there was a whole hunting party of drongos and uh, prinias and sunbirds and wobblers you know all of them congregating in that uh, tree and it was just the whole experience becomes much more richer uh, you definitely become a better observer when you are uh, paying so much attention to detail and trying to capture it in your book and just looking at a leaf and its forms and um, how how uh, the kind of deformities that it has um, how it's been eaten up in certain places how there is a fungal growth somewhere or there is a little damage there you know, and so many questions that you get when you're sketching, okay, what could this be eaten by? Or uh, is it a caterpillar? Is it a bug? Is it a beetle? Or is it a leaf cutter bee maybe? You know, these are the kind of questions that uh, keep coming to your mind as you uh, engage a lot more in your journaling practice. This is in uh, Sulawesi, Indonesia, wherein we, um, um, my husband and I, we got to spend time in um hide observing these critically endangered uh, species called malleus um, and this is the only place that they live in and how their populations are severe, severely threatened and just I think I spent hours just observing them uh, looking at their behavior and capturing their movements and capturing uh, the whole the entire experience was actually these uh, I would say these are very comical birds it's very sad to know that their numbers are like depleting the, the their behavior is actually very beautiful if you sit and observe them how they dig keep digging and digging and digging a big burrow in the soil to lay an egg much deep inside and we also saw monitor lizards that come uh, every occasionally you know to go in each of these burrows and you know try to um, take the eggs we do not see that happening but then they come look out for these eggs regularly and um, these birds just move away when the monitor lizards come they can't help it right but it's just observing all these little things just makes your um, your um, connection with these animals uh, build a bigger connection with these animals as such. Uh, he is a very similar quote to what I had mentioned earlier. Um, it says, spend one hour drawing a plant, you will understand it far better than spending one hour just looking at it. Um, each of you should spend time sketching 
uh, journaling with nature and you will really see the beauty of this quote as well uh, wherein um, the amount that you observe when you are uh, uh, sketching putting your pen on paper and drawing those lines to recreate what you're seeing is um, you take back a lot more than just observing it I think it, it's again different for each person uh, a naturalist would a naturalist would see it differently a school child might see it differently a parent or adult everyone would see it differently in different perspectives but how that makes you make, makes you feel or how you capture that is quite unique uh, with nature journaling and each person has their own unique ways of capturing things right and the learning that you gain from capturing this on paper is again very special um, this is the same page, uh, a more complete version of it. Again, it depends on time. Uh, the more time that you have, I can I spend more to make it more playful and play around with the text and the the writing and how how what I write, how where I color and everything. But not always I have this luxury of time. So um, it depends. Some are very quick sketches, quick doodles, just because it's a fascinating observation and I just want to capture it in the book. And sometimes with the luxury of time, you go one step forward to see, you know, a whole bunch of things. And as I said, you know, the direct en encounters that happens when you're just sketching a flower, like I saw carpenter bees visiting to the flower, many other bees and wasps hovering around. And the best part was uh, watching that caterpillar munching away on these leaves. So realize that it's a host plan for the emigrant butterfly. So there's so much learning that you gather while looking at these, uh, while journaling, uh, the whole process of journaling. Uh, this is again similar with more time. I'm able to explore more, able to play more and use my, one is the scientific aspect of it, what I, what, I, what I learn from what I'm observing and other is the artistic aspect of it and how I want to bring in the art and the fun of journaling and uh, just make my pages more interesting, more interesting for my own self, just to explore my cre creativity and just uh, have fun with journaling in the process. Um, nobody sees a flower, really. It is so small, it takes time. We have in time and to see takes time, like to have a friend takes time. I think this is absolutely touching and beautiful um, time is such a big factor for all of us and um, uh, even nature journaling does take time spending time with nature takes time um, having keeping a friend takes time if it is an effort for sure as you grow older for sure and um, the, I think the relationship that I have built with nature is one of friendship, one of uh, being a companion, being a, a, a hope to be a steward of sorts, to take the message of nature through art to people, um, uh, to be able to uh, get them to see that these little things grow in our backyard, they're all around us, you know, to uh, inspire them because yes, we don't have the time to look. So even when people look at a landscape and they're in awe with the landscape, um, uh, you know, they, they don't realize that it's these many little things that create such a beautiful landscape, right? It's these flowers that are carpeted the, the floor, the forest floor during the early rains and the grass and then the, the stones, the rocks, the saplings, the trees, all these little things come together to make it a beautiful landscape that many of us are in awe with. We, are, we appreciate that, but we forget to see all the little things that are around us. So this is where um, my transformation happens. I think from the field to the canvas in my studio, uh, wherein uh, this tree, the fishtail palm, I've spent many hours uh, observing this tree because I had to make uh, not this particular um, uh, panel, but something else. But uh, I 
spend time observing this tree in, in my neighborhood, in my parks, and then uh, trying to get that onto my canvas to be able to uh, tell a story about these fishtail palms. In this particular panel, we I've put together some information about this plant uh, and uh, some the close-ups and uh, the species that are dependent on this plant, uh, you know, just to communicate this to the audience as to uh, how fascinating this tree can be and how they can recognize it or see it when they are out in the field next time. Um, so these are again some of my studio works, how my nature journals have definitely helped me um, make my studio works uh, much uh, much more stronger because the the attention to detail that we start paying is a lot more and um, it it just I think spending time in the field uh, really enhances your observation and the way you start um, start looking at things on at large. Um, this is another illustration work, um, just observing uh, the rocks, the grass, uh, all these little things that you observe in the field that helps you build a bigger painting. I've even gone to the zoo on a few days to uh, sketch this uh, monitor lizard in different angles, just to uh, understand its form, its, its the way it moves, uh, just to get an essence of the animal itself. And this is what is happening now uh, beyond the sketch, beyond the book illustrations and uh, the other posters that I've been doing that um, as a team of artists, we are trying to um, uh, build information panels uh, that communicate about science, about species, about things that are there in our backyard to people uh, in the form of um, art and information panel. So yes, these are the journaling workshops that we have been conducting along with my friend Shilpa, uh, who's been there since the beginning. We started in 2010 and we've been doing nature journaling workshops. It has definitely reduced now because of the other canvas studio works that have taken over right now. But then this is definitely a passion that we will continue and we'll keep doing. Uh, to end with the last slide, I hope I didn't take too much time. Uh, this is again, uh, talks about how extraordinary these species are uh, for, for a naturalist, how if one might uh, look at a lizard, how for them it might feel like a crocodile, you know, and how a sparrow could feel like a bird of paradise. So each animal is fascinating, each species. It could be a, a lizard, it could be a butterfly, it could be um, a, a bug, an ant, uh, anything. All forms of the natural world are fascinating. It's just about us to take that interest and time to get to know them and to capture their essence as much as possible, to understand them, respect them, and admire them. Uh, I guess that's it. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Sangeeta. That was very, very beautiful session. It was a treat to the eye to look at all your sketches and uh, it was such a pleasure to uh, look at all your work. Um, I don't think so. We have a lot of time for the question, uh, but uh, I just have a few questions uh, to both of you. Um, first, uh, I would like to ask uh, Patricia, what uh, suggestions do you have for young artists who are just new to uh, nature journaling? Um, I would say to um, grab an, a notebook, anything, and a pencil and go outside and, you know, try to find something that you really like in terms, you know, like a tree or a leaf. And it starts small with a leaf, for example. But get a leaf that calls your attention because once we are drawn to something, I think it makes it much more exciting to, to challenge ourselves, right? So yeah, it starts small. Don't, don't get so caught up on the perfection or you know, how beautiful it looks. And actually, um, John, we lost that we were talking about and uh, Sangeeta also mentioned. Um, he says that um, he never gives feedback to his students 
about how beautiful it looks because just by saying that he is already like misguiding them to think that their images have to have some sort of you know beauty connotation so he always tries to give feedback like that's a great effort look at you know or making observations of the observations that the students did um so yeah that's my um and play you know like get a cheap watercolor set and just play with that um it's so much fun and it doesn't have to you know get a leaf with a pencil get some watercolor and splash on it and it might just ignite something in you that will bring you joy. Yes, yes, thank you. Um, also, Sangeeta, I we wanted to ask you that uh, you've been uh, in this uh, 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 field for so long, and uh, could you talk as a uh, talk to us about how uh, you've been consistently pursuing this for two decades and. Uh, um, how was uh, how is it to be consistent in this uh, career? Um, yes, I think um, uh, I have been lucky to be surrounded by uh, while growing up to be surrounded by a family who inspired me growing up um, to just be out in the wilderness. I think that was the whole start. And I think once you get inspired uh, enough, uh, you start interacting with people also who are probably um, influenced by similar interest and uh, that flock ends up becoming your community your family and uh, that's how you build your connections if you want to be an artist and once you start showcasing your interest and start putting out your work out there I think people do recognize it and come back to you to be able to communicate their work it could be a, a wildlife organizations or researchers scientists naturalists you know if they have ways of communicating uh, something to a larger audience um, uh, we try and collaborate and do things uh, you know it could be uh, I've started with a whole bunch of things it could be um, I started I think with uh, some book illustrations uh, tiny doodles for my uh, dad and then uh, my my brother some illustration in the book that he was putting together and then um, uh, a puzzle for a different organization and a poster a cover page for a guidebook you know these many little things and then uh, later that that became um, uh, trying to do children's story books with a couple of them and then also uh, with authors who are naturalists and um, uh, illustrate, uh, sorry, uh, naturalists and uh, uh, scientists in the field of who are professionals who write the books and they wanted me to illustrate for it. So it's, I think, building the contacts over the years and if they see your passion and uh, that you're committed to something that they do come back to you and yes, um, um, I think just being out there showcasing your work uh, is the first start and um, uh, from murals all the way oh yeah the very first one big one for me project was the a mural that I did at uh, Bandipur Jungle Lodges I think I was still in my art college days and um, uh, when I went for a bird watching survey in Bandipur National Park and um, uh, one I was smitten by this artist who was painting this big wall of a leopard uh, 10 feet by 15 feet mural and then I was like smitten and I was like okay this is definitely something that I want to do for the rest of my life you know so and within a few weeks I was there um, adjacent to that wall uh, also painting a big mural um, uh, right there so that was my beginning my stepping stone into this field uh, more formally and uh, there has been more, no looking back and I'm grateful for the collaborations and projects that have been coming my way and um, I hope to continue to do it and um, it's just keep your passion going and um, putting in that time the pencil miles and um, I think that's the way to go about it yeah awesome uh, so I think because of the time constraint I just have one last question to ask both of you um, what are uh, some of the 
mediums, art medium that you would like to take for your walks? What are some of your favorite uh, mediums that you carry for your uh, nature walks? Patricia, if you can go first. Um, well, I'm a little biased. I love watercolor. <laughs> um, actually, there's like this tiny, and, and, I, and it has to be something easy to carry. I don't know if Sangeeta, um, anything that will not stop you from going outside. So if it's like a big set with a bunch of things, you know, has to be something I, I use, like something small, like a notebook like this. And there's a, a tiny little set of watercolors that, oops you know, that I take and I saw that Sangita has two, like a water brush that you don't even, you know, then a pencil and that's it, right? You don't need a lot, but definitely um, my medium personally is watercolor. Oh, and then a, a pen uh, that it's waterproof, just like a fine liner. That's all I take. Um, and, but again, it can be anything. If you have color, pen, I've seen beautiful work on you know i shouldn't be saying beautiful work great work um on uh, nature journal pages just done by you know graphite or just color pencils or nowadays there are markers all kinds of markers that you can use and and do great stuff so whatever you have at home and you know don't let the the fever of art supplies get to you because it can get to you right you just want the, this or that um to stop you from just using something simple to begin with okay uh, what about you uh Sangeeta? what are your favorite I completely agree with patricia and i think the best part about nature journaling is that the uh, the things that we use for nature journaling are the most simple things you know, just a sketchbook. Uh, and yes, when you talk about a sketchbook, I would prefer it to be a, maybe a little hardbound so that it's just easier for us to carry in the field. And because you're walking around and it's just sturdy and it's uh, nicer to hold and sketch because you don't know if you're standing or sitting or what what's happening. So a hardbound sketchbook maybe, but any kind of sketchbook would also do. And um, black pen, definitely a waterproof black pen is a favorite. And a watercolors becomes a very simple medium to carry in the field uh, because uh, many times you, all you have to do is just simple washes of color and you don't have to go into the detail uh, when you're out in the field. So um, with just it's amazing how with just a black pen and washes of color, you can bring out so much, you know, as simple as that. You don't even have to go intricate painting and the little details. Uh, so definitely that. And uh, um, um, last year or year and a half back, I was in the US and I met uh, John Mulaws and um, he gave me this amazing little uh, socks that you cut uh, and then you just put it on your sleeve when you're out in the field sketching. And because when you're using your water brush, um, you, you you need to change the the color the the paint gets stuck onto your brush right just to clean it and just to wipe out all the um the unnecessary water ex excess water and things like that that uh, little sock is so helpful i don't have it with me right now but i'm still using it and that is amazing that that simple tool as a sock is just absolutely amazing so and yes i would not encourage anyone to use erasers if possible just try and have fun with nature it's okay to make mistakes and those mistakes itself are like a form of art i would say so uh, treat that as um uh, just uh, just depend on your eyes depend on noticing and observing and uh, that is the big magic or the the mantra i would say uh, for nature journaling yeah Thank you, thank you, Sangeeta. Uh, we have uh, comments. Uh, before we wrap up, I think we could take one question from this comment. And uh, um, how does one get over their uh, consciousness for not drawing beautifully and uh, start journey? Uh, if one of you could. Thank you. Okay. Do you want to do you want to go first? I was trying to read and I I didn't hear you. I'm so sorry. So can you? I don't know uh, which comment that you read. So, uh, how does one get over the consciousness of not drawing beautifully and start journaling? Uh, okay. Um, 
See, the the thing is, I think I know I showed many of the beautiful journals. That's because I come from an art background where I've studied art as well. But I think just to uh, try to consciously uh, be okay with, uh, I think our main focus should be um, what we are observing. And instead of what we are, um, the beauty of, uh, the beauty aspect is separate. But what are we capturing in the field? What are we noticing in the field? If there's any behavior, if there's, if you can transform your focus onto that um, and try to get it onto your papers and just mm, treat your paper as a recording uh, space as to whatever you're noticing in the field. And I think also combine it with, it's just not the art, but also the writing that goes with it. You know, make it like a scrapbook of sorts that, you're trying to learn from it than uh, first focusing. The beauty aspect can come later as you transform, as you grow, that can definitely happen, you know. But initially when you are trying to journal and trying to observe things, you know, uh, you can keep it simple and, you know, try to just focus on capturing things. Yeah. Beautiful. And Patricia, if you want to add it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think that Sangeeta said it all in a sense that it's never going to get to be beautiful, whatever that is, if you don't start somewhere, right? I mean, you saw how I painted my first mushroom. And at that point, I was like, this is beautiful. <laughs> you know, like, this is so much fun. And then there's many moments of frustration throughout the years where it's like, oh, this is nothing to do. But then you have to remind yourself, you know, this is a learning process, right? I think that the, the, the message is to focus on how you feel doing that. If that brings you joy, just to being outside, just, you know, looking at something and trying to put that on a paper and then repeat that over and over. If that brings you joy, you are eventually going to get to a point when you're like surprised that, wow, I now can see a different way to do the leaf and the shadow or the turn of the leaf. But it, it takes time and um, it will be frustrating. And again, you can't focus on the end result when you start. You have to focus on the process, on how you feel about it. At least that's what worked for me. Yeah, I think okay. you said beautifully. I think the process is what we need to focus on for sure. Thank you so much, Sang Sangeeta and Patricia. It was such a lovely evening uh, and uh, we really enjoyed uh, talking to you and uh, understanding and just uh, such a joyful session on nature journaling and we have a lot of comments saying how they've uh, enjoyed the session uh, saying it's amazing and lovely uh, very very happy that you agreed to uh, talk to us and uh, inspire us to uh, green sketching uh, thank you so much for uh, for this session uh, Sangeeta and Patricia thank you so much you're very welcome. And I, I did put my email in the chat if um, anyone would like to get some resources or tips or just get in touch about this. I'm very passionate. It's not my job. So it's easy when it's not your job to just. <laughs> so please reach out anytime. And um, we are going to keep trying to do um, this kinds of activities at the ATBC meetings, the Association of Tropical Biology and Conservation. So yeah, just send me an email and then I, if you want to, you know, uh, receive information about that next time we have some sort of activity and I'll be happy to, to talk. And thank you for the invitation. This was a, a great pleasure. And Sangeeta, super nice to meet you. Beautiful, awesome work. And I'll go check it out later. Thank you. And nice meeting you too, Patricia. I like the work that you've been doing. Very nice to meet you. And yes, um, uh, for um, I would like to be part of some of those um, sessions as well sometimes and people look out for it for sure and, yeah of course uh, yeah and um, I know our uh, we have a page called uh, Green Scraps um, India and uh, we are not as active as I hope to be because of the other projects that I've taken over but whatever happens when we plan anything we'll definitely put it out there so you can look at Green Scraps on Instagram and then reach out to us for everything yeah thank you thank you thank you all of you who have joined us today